What's up guys, this is Christopher Carrington with gmustudent.com and in this tutorial we are going to start writing SQL commands. And what an SQL command is, is it lets you manipulate information within your database, usually within tables in your database. So, the reason we needed to do all of this stuff is because we needed to connect to our database so that we can make SQL commands. So first, let's look how we connected to our database first. First, we made a connection, connection is assigned null, and statement, statement is assigned null. And we imported the connection interface and the statement interface. So then we printed out that we were going to start making a connection. We implemented our driver here and then we used the driver manager to help us get a connection. And what connection did we get? We connected to our database and we used the username and password to make that connection. And then we returned all of that to this connection variable. So that's all we did and then after that we just printed out that the connection was successful. And it printed out when we did the um, run that the connection was successful so we know it worked and none of the catch blocks were ever needed. And then in the finally all we did was we closed both of our connections. So very simple. I hope everyone understands what we have done so far. So what are we are going to do from here is we are going to use this class to write SQL commands. So let's look at this chart for a second. Here we have our project, and here we have our database. So here we have our project, this is the project that we're working on, and we have our MySQL database. In here, you can write SQL commands for this individual database. So you would just click that database, and then you would click SQL, and you can write SQL commands. But now that we have made this connection in, in, a, in Eclipse, we can do SQL commands in here as well. So if you look at this chart, what this is basically saying is we have our project and we have our database. Now that we have a connection with our, progress, pro, with our project, both of them can write SQL commands that will manipulate tables within our database. So first what we are going to do is we are going to write an SQL command in our database in the MySQL and we're going to see how that works and then we're going to write an SQL command in the project and see how that works. So let's do the easier one first. So let's go to our database and write an SQL command. So obviously one of the first SQL commands we could write for this YouTube would be to create a table because currently we have no tables in our database. So why don't we just create a table? So in here, follow this syntax and then I'll explain it. Write create table and then you put the table name. So let's say books. And then you open and close some parens and then give me a tab. And then you put the column name that you want. So let's say the column name is ID and let's say int and then do a comma. And then do the next column name that you want to talk about. So we can do something like name, maybe the name of the book and do var char, which is the data type. And then you say the maximum amount of digits you would like in that for that book. And let's just say 100. So we don't want books that have over 100 characters in it. And then we could say author. And we could say var char 100. And the last thing we can do is publisher var char. And we can keep that 100 too. And then you do not put a comma at the end. Now let's talk about this id int, and we can make that a maximum of 11 digits. So that doesn't mean it would go up to the number 11, that would mean it would have 11 slots. So like the number 100 would be 3. So let's talk about this id. What kind of things do we want for the id, since this every single book will have its own individual id? Well one thing that we know we would want is we do not want it to be null, because every book has to have an id, so you just write not null. And another thing we might know about this is that we want it to be our primary key. And that just means that the ID will be our primary key. It's our unique identifier for all of the books. And then one more thing that we know that we would want about this ID is that we want it to auto underscore increment and then comma. We know we want it to auto increment so that each time we put in a book, the number just keeps going up one, two, three, four, five, so that every time we put in a new book, we don't have to go back and see what the last number was and then add one to that. The database will do it for us. 
So do me a favor before we submit this, hopefully it works, but before we submit this, highlight everything and copy it, okay? So make sure you have your commas at the end of the first three rows and no comma at the end and click go. Okay, now highlight this and click select star from books. Click go. Mm, nothing's happening for me. There we go. So there, oh, okay, there was nothing in the books table, but we did create the books table. So select star wouldn't have really worked, but you see ID, name, author, and publisher. So that correctly did the MySQL command for us. But as I told you, we can now make SQL commands in Java. So let's drop this table and then make it again in Java and see if it will work. So in the SQL, let's say drop table and type in books and click go. Do you really want to drop table? Okay. So now if we come back to structure, there are no tables found in the database. So now we're going to go into Java and rewrite that SQL command in Java and it should create that database the exact same way that we just saw it. So let's go back into Eclipse and this is where we left off. So we can take out this connecting to database and connection to database because those were our error checks before now we know that they work and now we understand why they were there so after this connection we are finally going to use that statement here because remember I told you we use statement to write SQL commands so before you always use use statement you need to write statement is assigned connection dot create statement so what this is saying is I have statement and it's no longer going to be null. It's going to be a statement that I'm going to utilize. In order to create your first statement to actually write one, just say statement and do stop and do execute. And in the parameters, you're going to actually write the SQL command that you would like to take place. So in there, paste the SQL command that we wrote before and then put it all on one line. So delete all that, delete all that, delete all that, put this all on one line. We should have no more error. So when we save this, it should effectively create the statement and then execute the statement. And then at the bottom, it will close the statement. So, if we run this code, nothing happens, but let's come into MySQL and refresh this page, so click Structure, and you will see the books table is in here, and now all the books are back in there. So it effectively created the table just like we wanted it to do. So this was a very basic statement that we wrote, and just remember, anytime you want to write a statement, statement is assigned, connection.create statement, statement.execute, and write the statement. So in the next tutorial, we're going to get into a couple more statements, and we're going to write quite a few in the next tutorial. This was your first one to get an idea of how to utilize these statements, and uh, thank you for watching, and I hope this tutorial was useful.